Hey gang, number one Marmaduke fan here. I just read issue zero, issue one, and issue two of T-Bird and Throttle, uh, written and illustrated by Josh Howard. I am a very happy customer, and I cannot wait to back uh, issue three and four, whenever those are coming out. I think uh, late 2019 is mentioned at the end of issue two. It's a big, beautiful book with no ads from How Rad Comics. Uh, golly gee willikers, how should I review uh, this. The thing is, uh, th what this most reminds me of is The Incredibles, but its own thing. So the thing I like about The Incredibles is The Incredibles preceded the superhero, you know, genre getting beaten to death every other ho every, every other ho summer from Hollywood. And The Incredibles is just a great movie that happens to have superheroes in it, almost because they weren't, uh, they weren't. Th they were thinking about superheroes as something that was an unusual subject matter, not just like every other movie. Uh, it also. Uh, I don't want to label Josh Howard as a conservative because I don't know that much about his politics. But what I will say is it touches on politics by giving a fresh perspective to things in a pretty in a pretty subtle way. Now I say pretty subtle because he will actually mention things. Like, uh, he doesn't call the, anybody like a social justice warrior or triggered millennials, am I right? So that's why I say he's kind of subtle. But he is bringing in some d deliberate 21st century politics into it in such a way that is appropriate for his theme in a really meaningful way. So this touches on things like the replacement of old superheroes with new superheroes, calling old superheroes fascists, uh, calling everything sexist and... I don't know, uh, mis misogynist w without evidence. And the, the, the point of this story is really it's kind of the balance of due process uh, and like the importance of not trying someone in the court of public opinion. So T-Bird is kind of a classic, you know, big bra brawny superhero. He used to love uh, doing super heroics and, and fighting evil and something bad has happened. And I'm, get I'm getting some pretty strong hints about the the something bad that happened, but it hasn't been like definitively said yet. He's, Howard does a really good job of giving you clues as to what happened so you can piece things together while leaving some things in the dark, leaving some things uh, in the future for later for you to piece together. And that pretty much T-Bird has now been ta tarnished as like a horrible sexist, misogynist, racist. Uh, they do this fun thing where comic books in the world are kind of like tabloids where if you're a real superhero, you want to you want a comic book to go with it. If someone wants to slander you, they'll publish a tabloid comic book to call you an evil, an evil bigot. And uh, this is something that happens to T-Bird late, late in his career. His powers don't seem to be working on it, it, it. Sort of like Mr. Incredible's arc where Mr. Incredible uh, feels he, he has like a midlife crisis and he wants to be a hero. Again, T-Bird is also having this midlife crisis, but it's for different reasons and kind of the context of a different universe. Maybe one thing I don't like about The Incredibles is how quick they killed off all the superheroes because they just wanted to focus on The Incredibles, so they had Syndrome kill, kill off all the other superheroes from the universe. The T-Bird and Throttle universe has a history of superheroes. Before T-Bird, he used to grow up admiring superheroes. It has you know, his generation of heroes and like a young like hipster generation of heroes who are some of whom are taking over like the roles of heroes he used to grow up, grow up admiring, but he doesn't feel like uh, heroism, the superhero game means anything anymore. He feels like the new people are just doing it to break into Hollywood or to get into commercials or something. So he's, a, he's got a lot of frustrations. He wants to be a good dad. He wants to be a hero again, and he's got to sort through essentially what's essentially a midlife crisis. Uh, Having said that, so issue zero, uh, if you get this, hopefully if you missed it and you back the next one, you, you'll have a chance to get like issues zero, one, and two. I actually think you should read issue zero after reading issue two because it does seem to spoil or hint at some things in the bigger universe. Like uh, the, there is an accident, which uh, T-Bird says it was an accident. He, he regrets it. It doesn't, but he's accused of murder, but it, it looks like it was a case of it wasn't murder. It was an accident. Some of the details of that are still being like hinted at, but not revealed yet. So I don't want to, it, it's so good. I don't, I, I actually want to keep you, keep you from getting spoiled too much, except for like minor, except for maybe like minor spoilers. So this is what I would consider a, a minor spoilers. The mystery of what the circumstances were, how, uh, what exactly did T-Bird do that he regrets? Did he murder someone or was it an accident? Uh, some of that is 
hinted at in issue zero in such a way it would just kind of spoil a surprise in issue one. But even in issue zero, even as he's revealing things that are built on in issue one and two, Howard generally does a really good job of uh, not like not like revealing things you shouldn't know yet. Uh, th that said, I, I, my re preferred reading order would be issue one, issue two, issue zero. I'm not a big spoiler guy. Uh, it's just excellent. It's excellent writing. I'm really invested. I really want to know what happens next. Whoops, I bonked my own phone. Uh, the art style, Howard has a great uh, Batman the Animated Series inspired style, but it's not 100% that. And, you know, there'll be something like, you know, I, there'll be a hand, I don't think, is perfect, right? Because I'm OCD. But overall, the style is so fun and so fitting to a superhero just going through a rough patch in his life uh, that I just get absorbed in, in it. I'd like Josh Howard on a Batman, the animated series, you know, Batman Adventures book. This should bring back Batman Adventures. That's such a popular art style, you know, just profit off that forever. Here's another example of him doing something kind of clever and subtle where there's like this cult that worships something called like the Codex Supremacist or something. So it's has a little bit of biblical inspiration to it, but it's also like its own weird alien Cthulhu thing. And they'll reference intelligent design and a person will call him a Codex Thumper, right? So there's a little shade of Christian fundamentalism in it, but it's not Christian fundamentalism. Uh, it's it's establishing a universe where you can comment on things. And I don't know, I, I don't see this as a negative bash on Christianity. I just see this as sort of like a generic, weird cult religion where he's drawing a little bit from Christianity to give it a bit of flavor and a bit of realism. But maybe it's almost more like Scientology. It, it, what's interesting is it is that because th they use the term Codex Thumper, that makes me think, okay, this isn't just some weird thing nobody's ever heard of. This is a significant enough religion that people have, you know, n names for it. Uh, I'll, I'll show you like this little scene where he's in the bar and these hipsters show up and they call him a sexist and they call him a Nazi and, and they eventually like beat him up. And the point that I think Howard is making is that assassinating someone's character is one of the worst things you can do to them. And uh, it makes other people feel justified in uh, punch, punching a guy based on hearsay, based on things they don't know about, based on just their assumptions about the person. Where every impression we have of T-Bird is he's not a perfect man by any means, but he's not the evil bigot misogynist he's being portrayed as in the media and in the tabloids. Uh, so yeah, I'm really into this character. I uh, I love Throttle. Okay, there's one scene I have to talk about because it's just so moral and so decent. So uh, there is a implication that there's some difficulty between T-Bird and his wife. Whoops. I, by the way, I doxed my bare feet last time and I got all these weird comments. I got to watch that. So after his like little heroic adventure uh, and after he's been having all of this trouble with his wife, he says, well, what if I take you out for dinner, you know, treat you to dinner? That sounds amazing. Great. And then Throttle says, but no, we can't, uh, let's not spoil this. I know things between you and Jen have been rough lately, but this is not the answer. Go home, take her flowers, fly her to Farpoint. Be the man I know you are. She walks away. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. So he's got this professional relationship with like this martial arts girl who's his sidekick. And she jokes that he's, he, he's her sidekick. Uh, he's having this trouble with his wife. So he offers to fly out the beautiful girl. And she says, no, you, you take care of your wife. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, that's an example of T-Bird showing a weakness. Like, what did he have in mind? Maybe it was innocent. But uh, Throttle just kind of, like, firmly puts down, nope, we're not going to have any kind of, like, cutesy man-woman relationship outside of our professional relationship. Take care of your wife. And uh, we never see T-Bird, like, betray his wife in, in any significant way. Uh, we see some bad things happen to him that he has to kind of like endure and overcome. This is the classic hero story using probably one of the most important issues of our time, like the slander of people online, the destruction of their character, the belief that it's okay to judge people in the court of public opinion and then destroy everything about their lives because of that without evidence. And then, but then not making this a lecturing, I hate millennials these days kind of a story. It's just using it as an element in the story of T-Bird's heroic journey, where the question is, is he going to, you know, succumb to this darkness? Is he going to overcome these challenges and become the hero he was meant to be again? I love that he's a dad and he's really concerned about his daughter and he loves his daughter and he just want, wants to do right by his daughter, but he also has to balance this with wanting to be a hero and provide for her and 
stand up for his good name in the court of public opinion, and this means he's being pulled in multiple directions. I love Throttle. Uh, this is perfect. I am such a happy customer. Uh, follow. I will link to Josh Howard's. Uh, the, the, the Indiegogo is over, so you can check out the project, get, learn more about the project. I will link to his Twitter. Follow this guy. Uh, back the next book when you get a chance. You will not regret it. You will be a happy customer of Josh Howard. And uh, DC, give me, a, give me a Batman series written and drawn by Josh Howard. Make it happen. I'm normal Marmaduke fan. I love you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Click the bell to receive notifications. Links in the description. Catch you later.